Welcome to Meta's Marketing API Generative AI Creative Webinar. We're super excited to be with you today to share three exciting Generative AI Creative features from Meta that will help to create, optimize, and diversify your creative assets through automation, which should drive higher performance for your advertisers' businesses. To get started, my name is Jin Yang, and I am the Product Marketing Manager focused on Generative AI Creative products. I am joined here by an esteemed panel of subject matter experts that are passionate about generative AI. Uh, we have Raina Baker, who is a partner manager. Uh, we have Joanna Bosha, who is a technical partner manager, and Misha Berman, solutions architect. So with the 60 minutes that we have today, our key objective for the webinar is to equip you with an understanding across three, uh, three, a few key areas. First is why generative AI and Meta's investment in this area. Uh, two is really around the value proposition, along with uh, case studies that feature how these have benefited our advertisers. Um, and the last is really getting um, how to get started, where you will get detailed step-by-step -step instruction on how to leverage these features via marketing API. We'll also end with Q&A at the end of any questions that you might have. Um, and as you think through questions you know, throughout the session, feel free to kind of drop your questions in, and we'll be sure to get to do at the end. So let's get started. Uh, we really want to focus a bit on grounding everyone on why gender AI and the investment in it. I'll sort of start with a macro picture and the three insights that have made gender AI particularly relevant right now. The first is that marketers, as marketers, were constantly squeezed between the need to drive growth and find new efficiencies. We hear this from CMOs and all across the marketing functions. The second is that consumers are increasingly valuing personal connections, like messaging with businesses. There are over 600 million conversations between people and businesses every day across our technologies. And the third is really the power of creative products. There are keys resonating with people in a way that drives performance. And while creative has never mattered more, it's also not always easy to create so many customized assets. And this is the area that we're going to be spending a lot of our time addressing today. And before we get too excited, let's talk a bit about what we mean by AI and generative AI. When we talk about artificial intelligence in general, we're really thinking about tools that use a lot of data to solve complex problems. And when we talk about generative AI, it's a type of AI that takes in the data and gives back new content. And this could be in the form of text, images, audio, and full-on conversations. And we just have to really take a look at a few of the future predictions we'll garner to see that there's a lot to be excited about. So Gartner's predictions highlight that the impact of AI on how we approach our activity, creativity, and even sustainability. Now, we're not too far away from 2027, where Gartner predicts that 80% of creative talent will use generative AI daily. And now I want to bring us to how Meta is currently investing in helping with making creatives even more seamless and even more readily available. So I'd like to talk about what this means for this group and how you can get started tapping into the generative AI features that Meta has rolled out. Through Marketing API, we now have three key generative AI features to help you with your creative asset generation and diversification. Now, the first is image expansion. Now, this feature allows you to seamlessly adjust creative assets to fit different aspect ratios across multiple services, like feed, reels, stories, allowing you to spend less time and resources on repurposing creative assets. And second is background generation where you can now diversify the background in which your products are featured and create multiple backgrounds to complement your product images, allowing you to tailor the creative assets for different audiences. And the last is text generation. And this lets AI generate multiple versions of ad text based on your original copy, highlighting the selling points of your products and services, and giving you multiple text options to better reach your audiences. Now, we know that creative fatigue is an ongoing challenge for marketers, and Meta's AI investments are focused on helping marketers to do the very best work 
by allowing you to launch and test ad creatives faster and easily reach the audiences that you care about. And we've seen so much advertiser excitement and enthusiasm for this already. And as of date, uh, we have more than 1 million advertisers that are using at least one of these solutions in the past month. So now I'll hand it over to Reina to discuss how these features can benefit advertisers and provide specific case studies. Over to you, Reina. Thanks, Jing. That's a great segue into the value proposition section of our latest Gen AI features. You can go into the next slide. This is based on real insight. As we've worked closely with a small, diverse set of advertisers and partners to pilot our generative AI features, many told us that they estimate that generative AI could save them five or more hours of work a week. If we do the math, that's about a month of work per year, just to put it into perspective. So now, as you can imagine, the media planner received a creative asset in the wrong size, but instead of delaying the campaign, they can instantly resize the asset. And of course, imagine, the CMO who encouraged their team to pilot new generative AI-powered creative tools, imagine them hearing about the time savings and performance improvements. And this time, at a system-wide level, it's a powerful image to witness. You can go into the next slide. And that's why we really believe here at Meta in the real transformation of generative AI and its ability to free us from our most tedious work, unlock better performance, and enable us to spend more meaningful work, perhaps even the work that we hope will define our careers in the future. Brands are already seeing success. We'll now transition to the client case study section, which hopefully will get you all excited about the potential of our creative generative AI capabilities. Fresh, the beauty and skin brand that you probably all know and have heard of, obtained five times an inter incremental return on ad spend and 42% incremental conversions using Advantage Plus shopping campaigns with shop ads and text variations. What they tried. Faced with limited resources for Cyber Week, Fresh Beauty wasn't going to compete on media spend alone. They partnered with Meta to test text variations fueled by generative AI. This resulted in five times more ad variations per ad, allowing them to develop customized assets at scale with their ASC plus shop ads campaign. What they learned was that leveraging text variations allowed the brand to easily create and effectively test multiple messaging for their Cyber Week promo. When they combined this with AI buying through ASC plus shop ads, they found they could deliver the perfect message to the right user at the right time, boosting their overall campaign performance. What's next? Encouraged by this success, the Fresh team is diving deeper into AI-powered ad customization. They're testing our text variations feature in traffic campaigns to measure the overall uplift, and they plan to roll it out across the funnel for wider reach and impact. The next cut case study is of Living Proof, a Unilever brand, and they obtained 15% improvement in cost per purchase, 18% increase in total purchase volume, and a 13% increase in CTR by running an Advantage Plus shopping campaign with generative AI image and text generation in Ads Manager to really be able to drive creator, uh, creative diversification and website purchases. As you can see through these two case studies, these generative AI solutions are designed to unlock faster ad creation and more creative variations which would ultimately save time and improve the performance of your ads. I'm now passing it over to Joanna, who will share how to get started with generative AI via our marketing API. Thanks, Rena and Jing. And um, we now will start um, our technical session. Um, and if you have any business questions, this is your time. Start asking those questions um, in Q&A. And then we'll have a live Q&A at the end where we will address those. And with that being said, um, our generative AI features really live in our marketing API. And so I'm going to walk you through very high level how you can get started. Hopefully, you already have some general um, familiarity with our marketing APIs. But if you don't and you're interested, you're in the right place. 
So the first initial foundational requirements will be for you to have a med application. So you'll have to create a business app and go through business verification. You will also have to have Facebook login or Facebook login for business. And then you will need the necessary access and permissions, app permissions like ads management, ads read, and read insights. And then we also wanted to make a note that we do have a sandbox testing environment. Um, so this is where you can actually test to see if your implementation with marketing API is working as expected. You'll be able to create an ad account that is enabled for read and write for marketing API, but it won't actually deliver the ad. So this is great as you are either getting started on your marketing API experience or you're looking to improve it, you can definitely leverage our sandbox testing environment. Next slide, please. And then this is where you'll actually create uh, the ad. So these are the steps that you will take to create the ad itself. And as we had mentioned in the past, this new generative AI creative features live in the ad creative object itself. And so in order to create the ad, you'll have to first create a campaign, then define targeting, then you'll create the ad set. This is where you'll define budget, billing, optimization, and duration. And then in the ad creative itself, um, this is actually where you will opt in into these specific generative AI creative uh, features by adding specific fields. And this will give you access to image expansion, test generation, and background generation. And Misha um, will actually walk you through each one of these and give us a live demo so that you have a better understanding on how you can unlock these features. Passing it to you, Misha. Hey, everyone. Uh, so yeah, I will show how to use uh, the API calls to enable these features and show how it reflects in Ads Manager. So the first one is image expansion. Um, and some limitations that we have for this API call right now is it's only available for single image ads. Uh, we have a beta out to enable this for dynamic ads, uh, and that'll be out fairly soon. So uh, as you can see in here, all that you need to do in your API call is to set image uncrop uh, a property to opt in. So let me show you how that looks like. I'll show you an ad I have right here, an uh, ad set that has no ads. I did the first three steps that Joanna uh, talked about, which create a campaign, ad, define targeting, etc. And now I have a collection that I can also share with you uh, after this call. So you can do all these API calls and have samples of uh, them. And the first step is to create an ad image. Uh, so you need to have an image that you're gonna uh, have for the ad. So I'm taking this picture right here, just a one by one snowboarding picture. And in this API call, uh, it's just uploading the bytes and I get an uh, image hash back. And this image hash is what's needed in the next API calls when we actually create the ad. So you can see right here, um, I'm posting to my account and what I'm specifying is the standard fields for uh, ad creative, which is the name, uh, the text body, uh, what page it's gonna go on. Right here, as you can see, is the image hash, the one that we created earlier to specify which image I'm using. And now the new features that we introduced for generative AI is in this section right here. So you can see all that it really took is having an image uncrop and setting it to opt in. So after I run this API call, should get a response here that shows me that the uh, ad was created, it gives me an ad ID. I can take that ID and uh, show you, I have a variable section. I'll just plug in the new ad ID that was created. And what I can do is, uh, oh, sorry, one second. If I refresh Ads Manager, I actually don't need that ID right now. But if I refresh Ads Manager, I'll see a new ad was created with all the information I provided. 
And we have a section in here, Advantage Plus Creative, which shows all the different enhancements available. And Expanded Image, you can see it's enabled and shows you some previews of how that image is now verticalized and how it'll display in our different formats. If you wanted to have a preview of that image without creating an ad and see what it looks like expanded, there is a way to also do that. Uh, as you can see right here, all I have to do is pass an image hash, a couple other properties like the page and this actor ID, which you can obtain from uh, Facebook or Instagram. Way. Uh, now, if I run this API call without having any kinds of ads uh, created, I get back two things. One is, oh, sorry. One is a link to the original image in an iframe, and the other is you can see it shows you the image uncrop and gives you an iframe link. So if I were to take this URL that it returns. Paste it in here. I have to URL unencode it. This should load the preview of how the expanded image looks like. So if you have an application that leverages our API to show previews to um, customers, like for example, if you're an agency, you can use that API call to return uh, preview and display to your customers before they decide to enable it in the actual ad. Um, so I showed you how to create a new ad with image expansion. There also is a way, so if you just created a regular ad, you didn't specify anything in the image uncrop features, so image expansion will be off by default. You can take an uh, existing ad um, and just by passing the ad ID, uh, you can still run the same API call and enable image uncrop, and it will set the image expansion feature to on. Uh, for the purposes of time, I'll skip that uh, in the end. If you want, I can show it later. So the next feature after image expansion is text generation. Sort of like image expansion, it is very simple as well. Um, oops, you just set the text generation flag to opt in. A couple limitations right now, it's only available for English. And right now, you can only leverage the API to opt in to the primary text generations that are uh, generated. When you create an ad now in Facebook, um, as long as the text is over five words in the primary text or the headline, genera uh, text generations will be generated, but they will not be opted in. Uh, so with the API, you can opt in to those primary text generations. So headlines still will be generated, but you can't opt in to them through the API. So let me show you how you do this. So we'll go to text gen. Um, you could see, I could just create a regular ad with no text gen available. I don't specify text gen to opt in. So it creates this ad ID here. And I can show you the new ad created in Ads Manager. So here's the ad, here's the text that I had for primary. Book your trip soon for a spot snowboarding in South America. So you can see in this section, text generations, they're generated, but none of them are opted in. Same thing for the headline, they're generated, but not opted in. So if I wanted to opt in, like either when I create an ad, I can specify opt in straight in the ad, or I can take the existing ad, and then I can specify opt-in. So let me update the ad ID to what we just created. Uh, we just created this ad, we get an ad ID back, and I'm gonna take in my variables, update the ad ID that we just created, save it, then run the API call, which puts the ad ID in the body. 
sometimes get an error with Postman, so excuse that. Just have to run it one more time. So it was updated. You could see right now it says text generation is opt in. So when I generate, when I update this ad, it gives me the creative. So like Joanna mentioned, all these changes are on the creative objects. I have a creative ID that's right here. So I can use that to preview the text generations that were uh, done by passing the creative ID in the API call. Uh, one more time, let me update the creative ID that was just made. Save that. And then if I run this API call, which is just uh, passing the creative ID and it's asking for the asset feed spec, which that's where the text generations live, you can see right here, it tells you all the different uh, variations that are applied. And if I go back into Ads Manager and refresh, you'll see all five of those um, opted into. So you can see now these text generations are enabled. Uh, there's a bit of a limitation which is being worked on right now. With the API, it will only allow five versions of the text. So that's why you see the primary text and the four uh, text generations right here. Uh, and those, the primary and four, are the ones that are returned in the API call. So next, we'll talk about background generation. Uh, so right now, background generation, uh, again, very simple. You, there's an image background gen property that you can set to opt in. Uh, however, this is only available for dynamic ads. So you must have a catalog uh, in order to apply those backgrounds. So I do have a catalog. Um, let me go to the so I, I, I have something very simple created. Um, so this just has a couple shirts, a blue shirt and a white shirt, and it's a product set, and that's what you need to pass into the uh, API for running the background gen API call. So it's a bit more of a complicated API call where you have to uh, specify, like I said, the product set, um, and a couple other catalog features like the call to action for the template, a uh, link uh, if you want to show multiple images or not, et cetera. But uh, again, if you already have the API running ads on uh, dynamic ads, this should be pretty simple. All you have to add is the image background gen to opt in. So once I run this API call, will create a new ad. Uh, sorry, again, some Postman uh, issues. And you'll see the image background gen has opt-in enabled. Um, so what you can also do is you can preview um, what those background generations will work look like. So you pass a background gen ad ID, uh, and then you say what format you would like. And here I say mobile feed standard, uh, and a creative feature image background gen. So for the ad that I created, um, it, it may take a little bit of time to generate the uh, background images for the products. It's based on how big your catalog is. Um, so originally, if you were to run this API call when an ad is just created, you'll get something back like this, where it'll show you a preview of the dynamic ad in the body, and then in the image background gen, it'll just give you a standard stock preview uh, image, uh, and it'll say that the status is pending. So once those images are generated, you'll actually get a response back that will show you uh, that it's complete and it'll give you a link to see the previews. So image background gen, it says the status is eligible, which means that they were generated, and then you can go to this link. Um, so the ad I had was pretty basic with the two t-shirts. So just so you know that we do have a new model coming out soon that has better variations of how the image backgrounds will look like. Um, 
and yeah, that's coming out soon. Uh, but the ones I have are pretty simple. So you can see it took the blue shirt and the white shirt and uh, some other products that I haven't generated yet, but it applied a background instead of just having a plain white background in there. So let's move on to support channels. Thanks, Misha. That was so exciting to actually see those uh, features like real time. Thanks for walking us through it. Yeah, and I we just have this as our last slide before we open for Q and A. So please go ahead, type those questions. Uh, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your feedback. It doesn't actually have to be a question. It can just be an idea or any feedback that you have for the product team. We have Jing here representing the team and she can take that feedback. So looking forward to hearing those questions in Q&A. But, um, but we also wanted to walk you through our available support channels. Um, as you are probably now super excited to start on your generative AI creative implementation, we want to be there for you and support you in that implementation journey. So we wanted to walk you through what type of support you have available to you. Um, the first channel is just reporting a bug. Hopefully you already are familiar with this channel, but this is where if the API suddenly stopped working or if you tried to do the same things that Misha was trying to and you were running into errors, this is the channel for you. Go there and report that bug if there isn't already an existing one. And when you are creating that bug report, don't forget to give us all the important information that we will need. We love to get saved graphics for sessions and then all the other debugging information that we need, such as the user ID token, um, and then some understanding of how important this issue is for you. Is it a one-off? Is it a widespread? And obviously, that's going to impact the priority at, um, that it's going to be looked at by our team. So super important for you to give us all that information. And then another channel that we also have available for you is our community forum. This is a platform where all developers go to, engo to engage with the community and share knowledge, access resources, ask questions, bounce ideas around uh, for anything meta related for APIs and SDK solutions. And you can also find that in the developers uh, site under uh, the community tab. So this is where you can really go um, and see what 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 is what are we talking about and and perhaps even get in, inspired. Um, and with that being said, uh, we have covered all the material that we have for today. So I would like for us to open Q and A. Um, Rena, are you going to be our moderator? Yes, I will. So we okay. see one question and I'll pass it over to you, Joanna, since you helped answer it via chat. The question we received was, when will brands be able to select between generated backgrounds versus having them assigned by Meta with little to no visibility? Yeah, I have already answered this question and, and I can take it, but from an API perspective today, um, you can preview it, but it is opt-in for all. So basically you would be opting in, you can't select or exclude different ones. The purpose from a meta perspective is that we are generating, um, we are generating backgrounds and then delivering the backgrounds to the audience that will most likely um, be most likely to respond to. But uh, that being said, I think that's great feedback. And I did a, a little call out here for, for Jing. I do think that this is uh, a great piece of feedback to bring back to the team and say that folks are wanting uh, more granular um, control so that they can say yes or no to the uh, background generated assets that are returned. Jing, do you wanna add anything? Yeah, thank you for that um, question. We certainly understand that is a big concern for our advertisers to not be able to see all the different variations. Um, 
And this is definitely something that product is aware of. We also have Zi Yang Gao, who is a product manager for background generation here. Um, so yeah, it's definitely no feedback, and we're looking to see if there are ways to kind of solve for it. I think one of the challenges is that if sometimes the catalog is too extensive, it just becomes very unfeasible to really show everything. Um, so we're certainly trying to really figure out what are some of the ways we can work around it. Um, Deanne, we'd love to see if you have anything else you wanted to add to that. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Jing. Um, so thank you for the question. Um, I think what this asking can be uh, realized in our AI Gen feature. This is for uh, AI Gen is launched to 10% right now, I think, where you'll be able to generate backgrounds uh, for your hero assets or your lifestyle assets. And you'll be able to select uh, the generated variants or like regenerate if you're not satisfied with the results. Um, however, this feature, I think, I believe it's launched to only 10% right now, and uh, it's not currently available on Mappy, but you could definitely do it in as manager. I think it's all going to launch by the end of the month. But for catalog, as, yes, uh, we currently do not have any capabilities generate uh, or self-select backgrounds. Amazing, appreciate the response um, and continue to send over your questions. We received another one. Um, the next question is, is it possible to manipulate the generated text or images by giving or editing a prompt through the API so you can tell, uh, so you can give direction to the variations created? Joanna or Misha, do you wanna take that one? It's it's not possible right now, but uh, the team that I'm working on, we do have an engineer explore exploring the possibilities for giving positive and negative prompts um, for both text and images. So it's something that uh, we're looking into, but at the moment right now, you uh, cannot do that. Mm -hmm. More more for for text is somewhat possible in the sense that you have to give, we're going to use the text that you provide to us as inspiration for the remaining prompts, meaning that you could argue that that's a little bit of manipulation since we are the ones who are giving you, um, we're using that content to create the remaining ones. But um, but yeah, definitely agree with everything that Misha said and for the, for the image one, um, even less control. And at least for at least for text too, um, it's also slowly being looked into and rolled out. I think it may be at ten percent as well, uh, but it uses context of the brand voice and tone um, to generate that text. So any of the previous posts or ads that were created by the advertiser, uh, that'll be used as context when uh, coming up with those variations. Great. And I would just add that I think this is also feedback that we've heard from advertisers wanting more kind of control um, in sort of this creative generation process. Um, and it's something that, you know, we have heard and is definitely also thinking about as we continuously look to improve our products. Great. The next question we received is more of a legal question. It's how do you handle compliance issues with the generative text? Um, I'm not sure if Zayang, you want to take this one? Uh, yes. So right now, uh, you can refer to our AI gen legal terms that um, Meta doesn't hold responsibility for the generated variants or assets, uh, whether it's text or image gen. Um, so yeah, we we do not hold legal responsibility, and uh, but we have hope high standard on our Garrio model to eliminate those hallucinations. Um, and for image gens, we also um, try to avoid generating body parts for human faces, hallucinates. Um, so there's definitely high standards on our side trying to implement safeguards. But at the same time, um, yeah, if you agree to opt in to our Gen AI features, you also kind of take the responsibility for your own assets um, to review it before it's published. Yes, we always recommend reviewing it before you publish it. So yeah, feel free to take a look at our AI terms, um, which can be found within the, the link of www.facebook.com slash legal slash terms 
add creative generation, uh, generative AI terms. Um, and then the last question we received was, will this um, webinar be recorded and sent to participants? We're actively working with our marketing team to make sure we can send it over to you all and make sure we can send it to all um, attendees plus um, folks that have registered for the webinar. So that's to come and we'll make sure that we um, hopefully follow up via email with all those resources that we discussed. Any more questions? We'll give folks another one to two minutes and if we don't receive any more questions, I oh, just want to add on um, that all our features are free to use. Um, we don't charge extra money if you opt in those features. Um, yeah, so yeah, we kind of just make these features to be more performant for your ads. Um, that's the only and key goal for, for our products. So feel free to try it out, testing it, opting in. Uh, we, we do not uh, charge extra on top of the campaign cost. Amazing. Well, we haven't received any more questions. We appreciate your participation and we'll be following up via email shortly. Um, and yeah, feel free to reach out to one of us and we're happy to support um, on this journey. Thank you so much, everyone. It was a pleasure being here and representing the Meta Generative AI creative team. Thank you all. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone. Take care, everyone.